As we continue our journey, we will read the first seven verses of Psalm 37. So listen as we read from the word of the Lord. Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. The word of the Lord. Psalm 37 picks up the idea begun in Psalms 1 and 2, it carries forward the contrast between good and evil, or more particularly, between the righteous person and the unrighteous person. And this is a theme that weaves itself throughout the Bible. And so for a moment, I'd like to reflect on the Bible itself. It has been likened, uh, this is the thought of Karl Barth, to a great rambling historical novel. And yet if you read it, you will not find plot development or character development or any of the things that we associate with our own reading of novels or our watching of movies and television shows. There's no, as we would see it, deep psychological introspection or psychological self-development. It is not a modern book. Centuries ago, a man named Irenaeus likened it to a mosaic, and he was thinking of the mosaics that he saw on the Greek and Roman walls, and these are not particularly familiar to us either. They worked in his time. And so I thought we can liken it to a jigsaw puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle of thousands of pieces. Puzzle pieces viewed from the back are very much the same. However, from the front, as we put them together in their intricate patterns, we begin to see a picture. It is not too difficult to, generally it's not too difficult to lay out the frame, or if there's a very clear pattern to piece that together, but as we work on a jigsaw puzzle, the more intricate and sometimes central or perhaps peripheral segments are not nearly as clear to us. And then when it's finally together, we can see the whole picture. And the Bible is much like this. And it's also in its total picture like a great work of art that each time we look at it, we see it reveal more and more to us. Getting to know God is also like that. The broad outlines of God are not that difficult. God and God's self is a mystery. Human life is like that. And that brings us to our question that this psalm struggles with. That is, why does it seem that the evil prosper and the righteous person often suffers? I think it's a universal question. I think it's one we all ask. I think it's one we all struggle with. 
And I would like to tell you that you could read this psalm and get your answers and it would be fixed, but it's not intended to do that, but it does give us a way to look at the question. It reframes the question. If you read the psalm in its entirety, put its own little, tiny little jigsaw puzzle together, you'll see that it's a matter of faith. It's really struggling or pointing us to the question of, will we put our faith in the way of the unrighteous, or will we put our faith in God? And it does give us some suggestions. It says, delight yourself in the Lord. It says, commit your way to the Lord. It says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Good instruction today and always to wait patiently and watch God work out the intricacies of our lives. And it comes with a promise that God will bring forth our righteousness as the light, our justice as noonday, the justice that is due to us will be ours. And essentially, it asks the same question our previous Psalms have been asking. Will we choose life or will we choose death? Let us pray. True and only light, from whom comes every good gift, send your spirit into our lives with the power of a mighty wind, Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to sing your praise, for only in your spirit can we tell of your glory and acclaim Jesus as Lord, praying in his name. Amen.